What's going on, cryptocurrency universe? It's the Bitcoin miner here, guys, and my helper Kyle today. This is the box, and we've got the, I think the third rig I ever built over here. This is six RX 480s. This guy has been running tried and true for me for a year and a half. Um, it has made me hundreds of Ethereum probably. Too bad I sold too, too much of it, but it is what it is. But this guy won't run more than four hours. I've restarted about maybe six times now um, over the last two to three days and it's something's wrong. It's just not gonna continue running. So we need to pull it out of the box and check it out, do some maintenance on it. I wanna see how clean it is, you know, after been running in the box versus the one that's been upstairs. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out with uh, Kyle's help. As you guys can tell, it's the worst timing for this rig to give us problems, especially considering it's been heating my house. We've got one foot of snow here in Durham, North Carolina. It is awesome. All right, guys, we got the rig up here and all set up ready to go it was a pretty simple fix actually somehow msi afterburner has reset uh, the fan speed was at zero and the core voltage was at uh, whatever regular um, so we believe they were overheating and that was part of the problem now i have neglected this rig quite a bit as i've been extremely busy uh, i don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, diminishing returns based on the drivers this rig started off at 28 29 mega hashes and it's, it's pretty much gotten down to 19 mega hashes over uh, quite a long time now. I think the last time I probably updated this thing might have been a year ago, eight months ago. Hard to say, but uh, it's, it's pretty sad what it's got down to. But they have released these blockchain uh, mining drivers. And I would like to go ahead and get a chance to test them out, load them on this rig, see what kind of improvements it'll do, and go from there. It really needs some... Uh, TLC and Kyle's here to help us do so. So, Kyle, if you want to go ahead and take the show and see where uh, um, what this thing can do with the new updated drivers. All right. Well, we can do just that. Uh, so, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and close out of the mining program uh, that we do have running now, um, as well as Afterburner, because since we are doing a fresh install with the drivers, uh, we do want to make sure that there's just no conflicts there. Um, so, what we are going to go ahead and do uh, is just pop up our internet browser, and we're going to be using Google just for this. Um, so we are going to go ahead and search for the uh, the AMD blockchain drivers, um, a simple Google search. Uh, we do have this link up here from support.amd.com uh, with the Radon Software Crimson Relive uh, edition for blockchain uh, compute. Um, so we are going to go ahead and go to this page. Um, we do have this information here. Uh, we scroll down just a little bit here, um, and we should see the download links here. Uh, since we are using Windows 10 64-bit on this machine, uh, we're going to go ahead and download the appropriate driver for our use case, um, which is here, down here at the bottom. We're just going to go ahead and click on our save. Um, while this is downloading, we do need a few other pieces of software to be able to get this updated. Um, so we are just going to go ahead and open a new tab. Um, we are going to go ahead and search for uh, Display Driver Uninstaller, uh, which can be also abbreviated as DDU, into Google. Um, we do have this top link here, which is uh, wagnersoft.com, is the official display driver uninstaller link. Um, so we are going to go here. And we should have our website here. We're going to go ahead and click on the display driver uninstaller, the most recent link, uh, most recent update, I'm sorry, which is 17.0.8.2 uh, at the time of this video. Um, we should be able to go ahead and scroll down to find the link now. Yeah, that big download is an ad, be careful. Yeah, we're not gonna click on this one here. Uh, we do have the download and support here, which is the small one just underneath. It will take us to the forums of their website. Um, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down just a little bit on this forum post, and then we should see this big official download here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on this and save this as well. Um, and then the last piece of software we will need is the, uh, the AMD Pixel Patcher. So we're just gonna go ahead and go back to Google go ahead and type in our pixel patcher. We're going to go ahead and click. It is the monitortest.com link by AMD-ATI pixel clock patcher. Um, it takes us to another forum post. If we scroll down just a little bit, we should see this download here, uh, the uh, 1.4.6.zip. We're going to go ahead and just download this here. And we're going to go ahead and wait for these to download. 
Okay, we've got everything downloaded. Um, we're getting ready to go ahead and uninstall the current drivers, which I've got installed on this machine. But one thing of note, when you guys are installing these new drivers, uh, I like to make sure that the rig recognizes all of the cards that you intend on using. It does make it a lot harder to get the drivers installed. Sometimes they bug and you have to start over. Um, but ultimately, in the long run, it's a lot easier on you um, to get all your cards seen and recognized by the system. Otherwise, if you have trouble with it, you guys need to uninstall or just unplug all of your cards, but your main one that you're uh, using for your graphic, graphics display. Um, and then install the drivers and then install all the other cards and be very patient. The screen will flicker and it will find them. Um, don't restart it thinking it's, you know, something's wrong. Just wait an hour and, you know, then think there's something wrong and go from there. Okay, Kyle, take over. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do now, uh, we do have the, uh, everything stopped, all the minor programs. Um, we did go ahead and extract the files already, uh, which ones we did need to. So the first program that we will be running today um, is going to be the display driver uninstaller, uh, which will un uninstall the, uh, the currently installed drivers. As you saw, we had to restart the system, so go ahead, Kyle. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and run the display driver uninstaller. Go ahead and click yes here. Uh, this will pop up. We're going to go ahead and click OK through that. It just says that um, it works better if we do have it ran in safe mode. Uh, up here at the top, we should see the clean and restart. Highly recommended. We're going to go ahead and click on this. It's going to go ahead and do its thing. We'll just let it take its time, um, and then it should automatically reboot the system. Okay, so we've got it restarted now, and we've got no drivers. So we've got to install the new ones. Just gonna go ahead and uh, we should have the radon crimson. We're going to close out of the minor uh, install. Um, so we should have this minor um, crimson relive beta blockchain driver here. Uh, we're just gonna wait for it to populate. I'm gonna double click on it and install. It may just take a second for it to load, which is fine. Um, it's a pretty big driver. Uh, Alright, so since we did go ahead and get this. Um, installed now we're going to go ahead and let it extract its files um, this will take a few seconds um, once this does complete um, then we'll actually begin the actual uh, install for the drivers all right so it did go ahead and uh, extract um, so now what we are going to go ahead and do is uh, click accept and install on the AMD uh, UAC um, so it will just take a few seconds to uh, detect the hardware um, once it does uh, we will specify a, a custom install um, for our specific use case, we don't normally install, um, if she will click on us, sometimes it takes a second. Like I said, this stuff can be a little bit glitchy. Alright, so what we are going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and uncheck the problem reporting wizard and the settings for our specific UK use case. Yours may be different. Um, just for us, we do unclick those though. Um, so we are going to go ahead and click install. Um, now this is a pretty lengthy process, especially if you do have multiple graphics cards, um, but your screen will flicker and flash. Um, it's fine. We're just going to go ahead and install the drivers um, and we'll be right back with you. All right, that took about 10 or 15 minutes and we're ready to restart the rig. Right, we're going to go ahead and click on Okay, we let the machine restart, and the rig does see all of the six cards, but we've got some issues with them. Only one is actually active, um, and that's probably because these cards are modified, and we need to run the pixel patcher, as well as MSI Afterburner does not like this driver. It doesn't recognize a thing. So what we need to do is go ahead and select two, Kyle, the program we have over here. Oh, it doesn't show us the other ones, but we need to remember that 1095 and 2078 is what we had the core clocks and the memory clocks at. And um, go ahead and install your pixel patcher and see if this fixes it. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do, we do have it downloaded. Um, it does create it in a nice little folder, um, so it's the ATI MK DAG packs, uh, patcher. Um, so we're going to double click on that and run this program. Going to hit uh, yes to allow. Um, it does show some issues here, so we're going to go ahead and patch the found values. Um, it will go ahead and patch these in the background, um, and then it will pop up when it's done, like it has done here. Now we're going to go ahead and reboot the system, and then it should show all of the cards. 
So the pixel patcher did the trick and all six cars are active. But we need to go and upgrade MSI Afterburner. If you don't mind, Kyle, show us how that's done. Yep, so we're just gonna go ahead and open up our uh, web browser here. Um, we will be going back to Google um, to be able to search this. Uh, we will search MSI Afterburner here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and download the new program. So we are gonna be going to the msi.com uh, slash Afterburner here. Um, we should scroll down just a little bit. It is kind of hidden a little bit, but if we look right here, we should see this little gray downloads. Um, and then this top one, uh, download the latest version of MSI Afterburner. Um, at the bottom, we will be clicking the save. And we'll just be waiting for this to complete. Uh, so this is a bit complete. We're going to go ahead and open it now. Um, and we will be extracting the two hour downloads folder. Now we can go ahead and go back to our downloads folder, um, but we should have our MSI Afterburner set up here. 4.4.2 uh, is the version that we are using at the time of this filming, and we're just going to go ahead and install this now. We're going to close the old version of it just to make sure that there is no um, issues when we do install the new version. We're going to go ahead and click accept to the terms of the license agreement. Now if you wish to have this program, uh, you can install it with it. It does come bundled. Uh, for our use case, we will uncheck this as we have no use for that program. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just click next through this and install the program. Go. Alright, so our MSI Afterburner did uh, finish installing. Um, so we are going to go ahead and click on finish and uncheck the show readme. So we all wait for our MSI Afterburner to pop up. Now, sometimes when you click OK um, after the install, it doesn't always pop up, but you can find it down there in the bottom of your corner um, of the corner of your windows. So we do have MSI Afterburner up now. Um, it looks like it did bring over oh. our profiles, possibly. Um, Correct. Two. Yeah, let's there just you go. go. Click uh, check. Yep. So I always like to restart the system after doing stuff like this. So we're going to do a quick restart. Let's see what we've got. All right, guys, it sees all six cards. Looking good so far. As we reset the settings from last time. Eager to see what this guy's gonna do. Okay, here we go, guys. We're getting down to the moment. Is it gonna be all zeros for the first one? We're gonna have to wait for the second one? Uh. -uh. Uh oh, it goes blurry. Oh, there we go. 26. Nice job, Kyle. Thank you. So we got up from 18 to 26, and we're dual mining. Very nice. So our existing settings still seem to work just fine. We'll have to check the stability of them, let it run overnight before we put it back down in the box. But you guys are going to have to make sure to check out the next video because we are going to rebuild it into our professional mining rig box here. So I've got a, quite a few of these and we're gonna rebuild my old rigs into these boxes here very soon. So we are dual mining, which is also part of the issue. So that's very promising. Oh, we see we have one rig stuck at 23, 27. Um, I bet you just restarting the system will help uh, fix that. I've seen this before. Again, this stuff can be really glitchy, but nine times out of 10 restarting will fix that. Um, looking very very good let me know if you guys have any questions or any comments down below uh, before we go ahead and kill this video kill this video let's see what kind of power we're consuming we were at what 770 before yep so let's see if the power consumption has changed uh, with these different settings in the higher hash rate it has gone up we went from 770 to 853 um, the core voltage is still at 93 which is interesting, but the new MSI Afterburner, if you guys were paying attention, we were at the max, uh, has actually increased, so we can go a little bit lower. Kyle, while we're on this video, go ahead and make that a little lower. Make it like 120. Uh, let's see what happens. But we do have that one card that's giving us trouble, so we're gonna need to restart and fix that. So let's pause this and restart. So before we restart it, Kyle realized that he sometimes it doesn't apply it to all cards in MSI Afterburner. 
Um, so we were selecting all the cards and it did not apply it. So did you do so, Kyle? Yep, we're gonna go ahead and go to the uh, little GPU tab over here. Um, if you don't know, this currently shows all of the cards um, that we do have plugged into the system, which is six uh, RX 480s. Um, so normally we do have our timers, um, our clock settings here. Um, it looks like our five and six did not take a, it looks like our six didn't take hold. Um, so we're just gonna go and update that really fast. Shrink the box, go down, okay. click two, load two. Now go back and recheck, change your power core setting. Okay, obviously we've run into a glitch, and I think that's part of the problem. Show them, Kyle. So between uh, graphics card 5 and 6, it looks like a visual bug uh, between the core and memory clock speeds. Um, so we are going to attempt to reboot to see if that will uh, help remedy that situation. So restarting it obviously did not fix it. And what may have happened is I have one card that's not modded, and this might be that card. And I might have switched it around during the last fix, um, potentially. So that might be the problem. We still have the funny glitch where the bars are moving, but it seems to be working fine other than that one particular card. So I'll need to check and see if it's modded or not. And we'll take it from there. But there you go, guys. Uh, this is how you update your rigs and use the new blockchain mining driver. It obviously does work so far. We'll check the stability of it. It's not too hard to do. Um, we've got this rig ready to go. Now we're just going to change all the risers. The risers are really old. Uh, let's completely redo this into the case. And that's going to be the next video. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Talk to you later on. Uh, see you guys later on. Bye, guys.